Local media reported this week about a suit brought against the University of New Mexico over unequal pay. Now, in June of last year, the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, or the EEOC, sent a letter to dozens of female staff members at UNM saying they were being paid less than their male counterparts. So now three professors, two who were named in a KRQE TV report, have filed suit against UNM claiming violation of fair pay laws. Here with me to talk about this and other topics in the news this week, our attorney Sophie Martin. Michael Burge back with us. He's a public health consultant and past president of the American Public Health Association. One of our regulars, Tom Garrity, is with us from the Garrity Group PR. And former state senator Diane Snyder is with us. Welcome to you all. Now, Sophie, EEOC you said there is about $2.8 million in deficit owed to female professors. That not came, each, though, not each. Not each. That yes. would be awesome, but not each, yeah. right. <laughs> not awesome for the university, but, you know, right. <laughs> but let me read the interesting, um, you know, one of the female uh, uh, professors I, I mentioned got a letter, said the letter received from the EEOC stated, quote, the university owes you $100,000 and you should get a lawyer, end quote. It's an interesting way to get into, into this situation. Well, it's, it? it's actually, let me start mm -hmm. by saying it's not uncommon when the EEOC is asked to look into right. a, a, an employment situation like this one, mm -hmm. that they would issue a letter that says you should see a lawyer. In fact, when mm -hmm. they conclude their investigation, that's almost always what they say, regardless okay. of the outcome of the investigation, is that you okay. should have an attorney look at this. Um, but what I think is interesting is the, is the number, $100,000. Now, we don't... We don't, uh, my assumption again is that that's over the lifetime of this person's, this right. professor's contract with the university. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen the rest, or I, I at least haven't seen the rest of the letter, so it's hard to know mm -hmm. how, um, how strong and definitive that letter is. Uh, but what I think Good is point. interesting is that, mm -hmm. um, that the attorney, uh, sorry, the, uh, the professors are taking this opportunity to take it to the courts. Mm -hmm. um, it may be that they're looking for a negotiation and payout from the university and that, I mean, that this is a common first step in that sort of situation. Mm -hmm. But um, looking at what the provost has said about right. what universe, the University of New Mexico has been trying to do since basically, I think, 2006, mm -hmm. it seems like um, the university is attempting to address some of these issues. Mm -hmm. This may be an opportunity for them to um, to take another step forward in that. It's always hard, though, when you're doing it in the context of lit litigation. That's exactly right. It, it could have been settled, weren't settled, using that word loosely, but you know what I mean, kind of dealt with before it got to that point, exactly. Michael, good, interesting point here that awareness about unequal pay is not a new thing at UNM. There was a report in 2015, Chronicle for Higher Education report found that female professors were paid less than men at 2015 was, you know, not a long time ago, but plenty of time to get some things moving. You know what I mean? So where, where does the university take this from here beyond just writing a check? Well, I, I think the other point that was, was made was that in comparison mm -hmm. to other state universities, uh, UNM doesn't quite, if you, if you want to measure up, I guess I would say, mm -hmm in terms of uh, their response to this, this issue. So I think that that's something that, that uh, needs to be looked at as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then I guess my inclination is to broaden this and have to kind of ask the question, mm -hmm. well, what about um, uh, the other uh, communities of color and other professors yep. in terms of African Americans, mm -hmm. uh, American Indians and the Hispanic Latino uh, professors and 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 somebody might want to exercise a little preventive uh, care and and diligence in terms of looking at that because there, if there's an issue with this, mm -hmm. it's quite possible there may be some other things going on that history somebody, shows. That's somebody right. needs to look at. That's right. You know, Diane. Interestingly, Sophie mentioned uh, uh, not by name but Chucky Abdallah when he was provost mm -hmm. back when, saying, "Look." It's a little bit nuanced here for the, this pay difference. Sometimes women, you know, lose time but going and having children. They come back, they're sort of off that track of getting raises, or they may work in departments where the, the money's not just as good. Was that a satisfactory answer? I know it's, we've had a long, a few years to think about it since he made this statement, but is that a satisfactory response to you? No. Okay. Uh, I've been fighting for equal pay for women for for many, many, many years. Mm -hmm. And those are the same arguments I've been hearing and same excuses mm -hmm. in my world. That's an excuse. Mm -hmm. Now, there is an element of truth, yes. One of the things I noted is that the EOC, EOC letters only went to uh, uh, women in economics, English, linguistics, and marketing. Mm -hmm. 
and I guess the one economics surprised me a little. I would have thought there were right. more male professors in economics, maybe not so much in English and linguistics okay. or marketing. Yeah. And, and one of the things that pro the provost mentioned was the engineering department. Yes. Yes. Well, that should be changing considerably based on how many women are now going into the fields of engineering, the various right. areas of engineering. Would it be your anticipation, by the way, you named off those departments, there's a whole lot more departments than that on UNM and a whole lot more female professors yes. teaching. Would you anticipate they're also being underpaid and not I, just? Yes. Okay. I, 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 the old saying where there's some smoke, there's some fire there, folks. Right. If you're, and I guess what surprises me is, did they just start looking at yes, it now? That's right. Let me ask Tom. Let me ask Tom. That. I got to swing my man in here. That is interesting, isn't it? That there, this has been, like I mentioned, there's been a report about this since 2015. We've had some turnover. We can understand that. We've had at the top, but we have a new, we have a new person at the top now. Yeah. Good opportunity, isn't it? Oh, President yeah. Stokes has a fantastic <coughs> opportunity to mm -hmm. really kind of dive into this issue. And, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't really hear during her interview process mm -hmm. that this was, uh, you know, a, an area that she wanted to hit right off the right off the top of the bat. But right. um, I think it's a great opportunity for her to really kind of show what her leadership style is. Mm -hmm. Uh, she's definitely in a position to, you know, uh, make this a, a prim premier issue. I know that with New Mexico State mm -hmm. University, for example, during the review of the uh, presidents there, uh, as far as the interviews, uh, all of the faculty uh, salaries were discussed, but right. not just, it wasn't broken down between male, female, or by ethnicity. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's something the faculty will always be pulling for, is, right. is more pay, uh, especially right. in light of, you know, what athletics uh, gets paid and uh, what mm -hmm. other department heads uh, get paid. So, you know, I think it's a worthwhile discussion. I think her biggest, uh, meaning uh, President Stokes, uh, you know, real challenge will be how do you shape and move this uh, discussion forward without it getting stuck in a quagmire of finger pointing as he said, she said right. type stuff. And let me ask you the same question I asked uh, Senator Snyder. Do you anticipate this 2.8 million could actually be more when you start to think about all the female professors on campus? Do you know what I mean? If, if they really start to look into this, it could be... Uh, more money? Yeah, I, maybe I, I'm off here, but I, you know, I, something in my gut tells me this could be You know, good policy not. fosters good public relations, and I right. think that the policies, when you change it, you need to be able to make everyone whole. Gotcha. And as a part of that, it could be a pretty price, a pretty hefty price tag. Mm -hmm. We'll see what happens. Now, Sylvia, another plaintiff, Professor uh, Julie Shigaguni, she said she had learned years ago that she was being underpaid, went to her, went to her <laughs> department head at the English department, but told she didn't have a case. And this is interesting to me because that's part of the problem here. You can have one person's word I think sometimes. It's, I think it's and, you know, not to take legal advice from your boss. <laughs> right. I, I think in general, that, that, so we don't know the full context Good point. of what happened. Thank there, you. But, but what we see at UNM <laughs> is a real shift in accountability yes. around women's issues. Mm -hmm. not, not just what we're talking about today with salary for women on campus, but also what we talked about in previous weeks about Title IX and sports and parity in sports. Mm -hmm. Um, what uh, Diane talked about a moment ago in terms of trying to get more women involved mm -hmm. in sciences, in, in STEM mm -hmm. areas, mm -hmm. um, and I think what we're seeing nationally on the political and, and social scale with, with um, women stepping forward and saying, you know what, this isn't whatever, mm -hmm. this isn't acceptable anymore. Um, it's, a, it's a great moment for UNM, mm -hmm. um, especially with a new female president. Let me ask you this. heading up uh, UNMH. Is the timing, timing and everything is, is critical. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't matter what part of life. And the timing seems good here. We have Me Too going. And in fact, one of the plaintiffs had a quote that she said, this is really not about the money, it's about standing up for ourselves. It's standing making up, a point. I think it's standing up for themselves and right. also standing up for other women in the workplace. That's right. That's because right. we know that UNM is not the only place where this happens. We know women um, in general are making less than 80 cents on the dollar. Women of color are making quite a bit less compared mm -hmm. to um, white males. Mm -hmm. And, um, oh my goodness, some state just ratified the Equal Rights Amendment. <laughs> so something's yes. in the, something <laughs> in the air and I think I think that um, when women step forward and say listen my rights are important mm -hmm. they're also they're also carrying the torch for other women in the workplace and in our communities good point there Diane we finish this segment with you any thought here that perhaps uh, the courts are one way is there a legislative fix possibly to this pay issue in, in your in your gut is, is that something the legislation should maybe not muck into but is there a fix there I'm, I'm, I'm curious uh, 
eventually yeah. they would have to be involved for the funding. But I think at this point, it is a matter of, the university is trying to take steps, positive mm -hmm. steps. Mm -hmm. They can negotiate. I, I'm not quite sure that we're ready to even go to the courts. Mm -hmm. I think that people need to sit down and work this out. Right. And I do think that we have a great opportunity, as Tom and other, uh, Sophie said, with a new president That's right. willing to take this on. She has a few other problems she has to deal with right now, but, <laughs> but I think this is something. So eventually, yes, yeah. the legislature would have to be involved in funding for the un various That's universities. Right. That's right. Because this is not just unique to UNM. It's the other four-year uh, universities Thank as well. Thank you for well. saying that. Exactly right. Michael, pick up on that if you would. You know, obviously redress Money's one thing, but it's a culture change, isn't it? It's something, you know, has to, you have to have confidence walking in the door as a woman that you're going to be paid your worth, right? You have to have, you have to have that. Well, it's about, mm -hmm. and it all, it is, again, is always about leadership. Right. It's about leadership and accountability. Right. The other thing I need to mention Please. is there was a recent report by, I believe it was the National Academy of Science on sexual harassment of women in academic settings. Uh -huh. And so this is something else that I think that UNM and all academic settings need to be paying some attention to mm -hmm. because it's, it looks like a very sound study. That's interesting. I want to follow up on that for sure. Thank you all for that discussion. Though, that's all the time we have for that one. When we come back to the line, we'll discuss some updates in the Albuquerque Police Department.